Hey, I'm Dr. Morales and I've treated thousands of patients with atrial fibrillation and I have been doing catheter ablation procedures for almost a decade now. And I'm gonna talk about in this video how you can improve your success rate for an ablation procedure. Now you may be looking about information about catheter ablation procedures, you may be reading online, looking at the success rate for a catheter ablation procedure, and you've probably seen a lot of the same statistics that that I have seen in the same statistics that, that, that are out there, that for most people with paroxysmal AFib, where the AFib comes and goes, and you're not an AFib all the time, that range is the highest, and that range can be anywhere from you know 70 to 80% success rate. Uh, people who are in more persistent atrial fibrillation who are in AFib all the time certainly have a lower success rate. Uh, that success rate may be anywhere from 50 to 70% from the ablation procedure. So you may see these numbers and you say, gosh, this success rate is not that great, or how can I make my success better? What do I need to do? Is it the doctor? Is there something that I can do? So this is what I'm gonna talk about on, during this video. I'm gonna talk about things that you can do to help improve the success rate for your ablation procedure. I'm gonna talk about things that are before the ablation procedure, during the ablation procedure, as well as after the ablation procedure. Things that all that you can do to help improve your success rate for better long-term success. So first, let's talk about before the ablation procedure. Is there anything that you can do before an ablation procedure to help improve the success rate for your ablation procedure? And the top tip there would be to get an ablation done as soon as possible. I couldn't tell you how many patients tell me like, oh, an ablation didn't work, or I had, or I know somebody who had an ablation done and, and it didn't work for them. But it, it's not, it's all comparing apples and oranges. You know, how, how long somebody has been in atrial fibrillation significantly has a huge impact on whether that ablation is going to work or not. The longer somebody has atrial fibrillation, the worse the success rate for a catheter ablation procedure. There's even been studies that, that looked at this, and I'll put the link underneath this video. There's a study that has shown that people who have atrial fibrillation for less than a year are going to be in the higher spectrum for success rate when it comes to success with an ablation procedure. So definitely time is very important for before the ablation procedure. So if you've been struggling with AFib for years now and you gosh, wow, should I get an ablation for not or should I wait a few years? The sooner you get it, the better. And that is going to be a very important key thing that helps you improve the success rate for your ablation procedure is going to be timing. Now, doesn't mean that you need to do it right away. The moment you get diagnosed, uh, you need to get an ablation procedure done the next week. No, not at all. But again, like I said, studies have shown that within about a year or so from diagnosis is really when you're going to get the best success rate from a catheter ablation procedure. So what about during the procedure, is there anything that you can do uh, to help improve your success rate from the ablation procedure? Um, some of that would be uh, making sure you pick the doctor and hospitals who have a lot of experience with deal dealing with AFib. They're, after, after they're doing ablations now for a decade. There's, I can tell you there certainly is something there to uh, having enough experience and having done this on many, many uh, patients uh, by now. So certainly uh, experience centers would be very important. However, I get a lot of questions about wh what type of uh, energy I use, uh, what type of energy is best. If you've been doing research on AFib ablations, you may see there's definitely very different methods to do the ablation procedure. Uh, the most common and long lasting one is something called radio frequency. Uh, that is certainly, that is something that's called, uh, more commonly called like a burning energy. There's also a, a freezing energy as well. Uh, freezing energy, is, uh, more technically, is called a cryobalone. Uh, and then the last, one other one that I've mentioned is a, a, in studies right now, has a lot of promise for coming down the road, something called pulse field electroporation. Uh, there's studies that have actually been very encouraging right now in terms of it, of it effectively ablating the area that wants to be ablated. However, you know, does it matter which type that you get? Does it matter whether you get burning, freezing, or should you wait for, for the clinical trials for this newer energy to be completed? Honestly, right now, in my opinion, would be that it doesn't matter. Uh, this, you know, a lot of these equipment for catheter ablation procedures changes every year. You know, I, I tell my patients that 
the equipment for AFib changes like iPhones. Every year there's something new, some new advancement uh, that comes out. The, the ablation is, uh, equipment is so good that I really haven't had to do too many repeat ablation pr procedures on patients. Uh, I actually put a huge emphasis on what I mentioned in the first part, which is the timing for somebody. I actually put a huge emphasis on my patients to get them in an ablated as soon as possible after they're first diagnosed. And because of that, I'm not doing too many repeat procedures. So again, that timing of when you get an ablation procedure is probably more important than which type of energy your doctor uses, whether that's a burning method, freezing method, or new other research type of, of protocols, whether that's a post field electroporation. There's also some laser balloons as, as well. So there's a few different energy options, but again, your timing is probably going to give you more better success rate, how long you've had a fit than the actual energy that the doc, or style that the doctor uses during, during the procedure itself. Last thing to talk about is what you can do after the ablation procedure. Now, this is actually something that can be extremely beneficial. Uh, some people may have uh, an AFib ablation that does well for several months or maybe a year and you start seeing AFib starts coming back again. And that's when lifestyle modifications can be extremely important. You know, I often tell my patients that ablation procedures are great short-term plans. They will rapidly improve your symptoms of AFib. They may rapidly decrease some of the medications you have. But if you want the, the ablation procedure to last and to work for years or even decades to come, then lifestyle modifications are extremely important. For most people, that will involve weight loss. Weight loss can be extremely important uh, to reduce inflammation, to improve blood pressure, and ultimately improve AFib for the long term. Uh, also things such as treating sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is something that significantly uh, affects uh, AFib as well. So if you're untreated for your uh, for sleep apnea, treating that can also improve your long-term uh, success rate from an ablation procedure. Uh, and another important thing would be uh, alcohol reduction or well cessation. There have been clear studies that have shown that people who drink on a regular basis, and it doesn't have to be someone who just drinks a lot and gets intoxicated. That people, even people who drink every day, like, oh, I have a glass of wine every day, they can also have significant impact on their AFib. And so a significant reduction in that alcohol can also make a significant improvement in your AFib. And this has all been studied in the, in the setting of an ablation procedure. So whether that's weight loss, treating sleep apnea, or alcohol reduction or cessation, those all also improve the success rate of the actual ablation procedure. So if you want your ablation procedure to last for many years or even decades to come, lifestyle modifications are extremely important. Now, I have actually have created my own program that puts an emphasis on these lifestyle modifications called the Take Control of AFib program, where I will give you the step-by-step -step plan to, to get everything you need to improve atrial fibrillation naturally that can help improve your uh, symptoms for atrial fibrillation. It can may even reduce your need for having an ablation procedure. And even if you do need an ablation procedure, it'll help improve the success rate of that ablation procedure for many years or even decades to come. So if you want to learn more about the Take Control of AFib program, just take a look underneath this video. There'll be a link to the, to the sign-up page where you can learn more about the program itself, as well as these testimonials from people who have actually signed up for the program as well and see what how they felt about the program. So take a look and I'll see you next time in my next video.